So you're thinking about using shipping containers to build your next house. Well, you're going to need to know the different type of shipping containers so that you'll choose the right one for your needs. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Hi, I'm Larry Lane. I'm an architect and I have been fascinated about all the cool things you can build with shipping containers. And then when I'm looking more into that, I find that there are a lot of different types of shipping containers. Some are good and some are not so good to be used for uh, building a house. Let's go over the four different types of shipping containers that you might want to consider to use when you're designing and building your house. Hey, real quick, I realized after reviewing this video myself, I didn't mention that there is a really handy table that shows what the type name of the shipping container is, its size, what it was used in the shipping industry, and its best use when you're building a building with it. Go check it out. I'll leave a link down below. Number one, it's the standard shipping container. Now the standard shipping container is kind of like my little model of a shipping container. It's just a box and it um, generally comes in eight foot widths. The height is eight foot six, unless you get a high cube, which is nine foot six. And I strongly recommend you using a high cube for any building that you're going to be building with, uh, with a shipping container. Cause you know, obviously it'll give you more headroom and it'll also allow you to do more cool things with the floors and the ceilings and more insulation where it could kind of squeeze down and make it a little bit, the ceiling a little bit too low if you were to use the standard uh, eight foot six high cube. But with the high cube, that's the one to go with. And the lengths are usually 40 foot, which is what this is a model of, and 20 foot, half the size obviously. And so there's a lot of uses for those two types. Now con consider what the shipping containers are used for and why they are actually built. They're built to be able to carry things across the open seas. And with a standard shipping container, you really don't know what was in there when it was being shipped across the seas. There are some kind of records somewhere, some way you might be able to find it, but oftentimes you really cannot tell. Um, and, but you can tell where it came from because of the, uh, all the markings on the doors. And by the way, I have an article where you can read about that and it'll explain all the markings to you. And I'll leave that, that article, the link to that article down below. With the standard though, when you're selecting your uh, shipping container, just keep in mind that, that anything could have been in there. And, and at best, you would choose something that did not have anything toxic in there, such as chemicals or uh, anything that could off gas into your home. The second type of shipping container is the open top. It doesn't have a roof. And the advantage of the open top is and for building a house is that if you are going to have a two story house made of shipping containers, you're obviously going to have to cut the roof of the lower one in order to put stairs or if you want a double height ceiling, that sort of thing. Well, with a, um, an open top, you don't have to cut it because it just does, it's not there. So it could save you a little bit of money by choosing an open top if you were to use it in that kind of application. Another type is the tunnel. The tunnel shipping container is a standard shipping container that has doors on both sides, not just one. So that if you were to open it up and you're looking straight in it, you would see basically a tunnel. Tunnel shipping containers are really good for homes that want to have full height windows or doors on both sides of the shipping container. I've often uh, enjoyed uh, houses and seeing houses that were built on top of a cliff and with, with perhaps the shipping container extending out over the cliff with a full, um, a full wall of just glass so you can see the whole panoramic view of what is below the cliff. And then if you had 
glass on the other side, then you can just, you can see obviously out that way too. The fourth type of shipping containers is the open side. Open side is, has the doors on the side to so where it can be open. And the advantage of that is you can have, since there is really no corrugated metal panels on that wall, you can fill that with glass or with a patio door or some glazed door. And those work really well when they're up um, next to a, a deck or um, if you want a, a lot of sunlight to come into your shipping container house, then this large side of the shipping container would be all open with glass to let the sun in. There's also a refrigerated type of shipping container. They're also called reefers. And the re refrigerated ones, some people prefer to use those for homes because they already have an insulated walls around them where you do not have to add more insulation necessarily, unless you want more R value into your shipping container to give you more insulation. The refrigerated shipping container also has a refrigerating unit on the outside of the shipping container. And um, that's, that's really how you can identify the refrigerant because you do see that, uh, the cassette on the side. Um, some of the negative things about the refrigerated type of shipping containers to be actually using them for a home, they include that shipping containers that are refrigerated are often used to ship across the seas pharmaceuticals. Now, pharmaceuticals could have some toxins and they could have spilled within there. And you just, it's, you gotta have to be very careful because you don't want all that toxins to off gas into your house. Another negative about shipping containers that uh, houses made from reefers or are from refrigerated units is that the insulation itself <clears throat> Uh, causes the wall to be a lot thicker and the walls are generally about eighth of an inch or sixteenth of the eighth of an inch thick without the, the insulation that's already in there for a refrigerated one. So if you're going to be cutting the sides for doors and windows, you're going to have a lot more cutting to do than you would with a standard type of, of uh, shipping container. And when you do cut through the refrigerated insulated walls or refrigerated unit, um, you will be releasing the, the insulation, exposing that and causing it to be somewhat friable and it could get airborne. And some of those can be considered toxic also. So you need to be very, very careful if you're going to be cutting into a refrigerated unit. And as I pointed out before, uh, some people do like the refrigerator unit and insulated units because it already has insulation in there. They don't have to add any more. But you might find, though, using the climate zone map that you'll also see in a link below, um, you might find that you need more insulation than what is already in, in there. And so, you know, if you're going to be adding more insulation, in my view, you should just go ahead and use a standard one and put the amount of insulation that you need in there where you need it. Another type of, of shipping container is called a half height. Instead of it being the full height of eight foot six or nine foot six, it's only about four feet high. And for homes, uh, the half height containers are really cool, uh, can be used in, for a real cool use, which would be for swimming pools. And it would allow you to have a wading pool that would be probably around three feet deep after you put all the shell and the and the lining inside of it. There are some, speaking of uh, swimming pools, there are some that are using the full height and in fact they cut open the sides to uh, have a glass so you can see out and see in uh, when the, someone's swimming in there. There's also some that use a 20 foot standard full height, eight foot six, let's say, and then they'll fill it up with water. They'll have steps on one side. And then um, in the middle, 
they have a divider that they can add later. And that divider is added during the winter months, the colder months, so that you're allow, allowed to, base, to heat up one side and not necessarily the other. On the step side, you can heat that up and have a nice sauna type of a hot tub. Pretty cool. Another type of container is called a flat rack. There's not a whole lot of uses that I can think of for a flat rack for the home design, except perhaps if you're going to use it for a, uh, a deck, an outdoor deck. Normally, flat racks are built and used in the shipping industry to carry some irregular shaped items that wouldn't fit into, inside of a box. And um, to use it for a home design, there are some, in my view, uh, limited uses for home design using a flat rack. And then finally, there is a domestic cargo container, and it looks a lot like the standard. It looks light like this, and you've seen them, I'm sure. You've seen them on highways where a truck is actually pulling it along, and it's on a trailer, and, it, and they put it on top of there. It looks just like a shipping container, but it's not. It's actually, it's called a domestic container, and it's made of lighter materials so it is not as structurally sound as a shipping container because the shipping container had to be designed to withstand all the tossing and turning and pounding between the waves and all the wind and the salty water being sprayed all over it um, whereas a domestic container is for land use so it doesn't need to be as structurally sound as a as a shipping container does so I wouldn't use a domestic container for the for building a house. Uh, you, you'd be better just to stay away from that one. If this video has been helpful for you, give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to this channel and join me when we just explore all the cool things that you can build with shipping containers.